there are three charges that have really floated to the top of this black ink abyss that has turned into the Mar-a-Lago situation. Now, I'm not going to stare at it like it's some sort of ink blot test and tell you what I see. This episode, facts only. So the three charges are first, destroying documents. This is to impede an investigation. Now, I'm not going to really talk about this at all because no evidence has been released to support either side of that case. Charge two, taking, hiding, or destroying documents legally required to be held by the government, classified or declassified. Think something like the Constitution. Anyone can read it, but oh boy, if I take it home with me, someone with a gun is going to show up at my door and try to get it back into government custody again. Then you got charge number three, illegally retaining or transmitting things related to national security. What makes it illegal? Well, we just went over charge two, got to be in government custody. Can't be taking documents away from the government. Got dibs. National security documents, well, that's a double whammy and it stacks on top of that other charge. Now it's really this third charge that's stealing everyone else's thunder. You're not going to write a headline about a process argument when, well, there's the aroma of some sort of national security document leak floating around in the background. So this brings up two major questions. First, has this whole classified document, oh, oh, but I declassified them without telling anyone debate going back and forth, been just a huge waste of time? And second, what would constitute illegal mishandling of national security information? So first, the elephant in the room, classification. Now you guys are probably imagining that, well, to mishandle national security information, one would have to be referencing some sort of classified document. Now, unfortunately, that limiting factor has never explicitly been put to paper. There are certainly laws about how to handle explicitly classified documents, but interestingly enough, none of those laws are cited in the search warrant for the Mar-a-Lago estate. Now, from the legal umbrella we're operating under, well, as long as the entity in question is national security related and its treatment is deemed to be illegal, that might be enough to tick off all the right boxes. Depends on how expensive your lawyer is. You see, you can go deep down a rabbit hole on how classified these classified documents have to be or don't have to be, but there are two interesting and diverging arguments. See, one side will rightly point out that the Espionage Act that establishes all this stuff was written a few decades before we created our classification system. Now, if those guys who wrote those laws understood future legal terminology, they might have considered dropping a few classified information prerequisites in there. But because they didn't know about it, they didn't. This is reflected by the opinions of modern courts when they turned around and reinterpreted this old legislation. According to Lawfare, it's true that the statute refers to information relating to the national defense, not classified information. But according to two consequential cases that interpreted the phrase, information relating to the national defense, in the Espionage Act, information relating to national defense, wow, I'm getting tired of saying that phrase is a broad term encompassing activities relating to national preparedness. But, and this is a big but, it must also be information for which the government has taken some steps to keep it secret. So yeah, you're not going to be a foreign spy because you shared a New York Times article about our troops on Facebook. The information in question has to be something related to A, national defense, and B, something that the government is trying to keep secret. Put another way, sure, you might have declassified the documents, but it's related to national defense, it belongs to and has been subpoenaed by the National Archives, and of course investigations have ordered you to turn it over and to keep it under lock and key while everyone just sort of figures out what's going on and collects the evidence. Certainly seems like someone's making an effort to keep Schrodinger's classified documents a bit of a secret. Now who will witness interpretational debate and more importantly the potential ensuing debate over whether Trump could have actually declassified these documents, all of them or not? Don't ask me, ask a judge. 
Now this brings us to the second question. What would constitute illegal mishandling of national defense documents? You see, you got your clear as day cases where someone is literally working against America and trying to sell or leak national secrets, or some other obviously shady thing we could all point to and say, that's bad. But because the public hasn't been shown any evidence showing legitimate illegal intent, this case currently exists in the realm of other cases where the defendant's plea was more along the lines of, <clears throat> Your Honor, I am a complete moron who cannot be held accountable for his actions. Please don't charge me for espionage because I accidentally took defense documents, went on a bender, and then lost them. Now this is also known as gross negligence and is a stand-in for bad intent. Speaking of which, enter the case of United States vs Staff Sergeant Gonzalez. Gee, I wonder if I found the right case. Is this the one about the United States government classified information? Whew, how much of those hundreds of billions of dollars that we send the Pentagon each year goes towards black ink? Now, in this case, Staff Sergeant Gonzalez was going on vacation to Alaska. And wouldn't you know it, he accidentally brought some classified documents with him. Now, when he was going through his garyons, upon arrival in Alaska, he realized his mistake when he found the documents. He promptly hid those secrets at his friend's desk and intended on picking them up when he left. But of course, he partied his mind away and totally forgot about those classified documents. A few days after his departure, his friend's roommate was looking for a piece of paper to write down a phone number, opened up the door in question in that desk, and found a whole lot more classified documents than he was expecting to. Now, of course, that roommate panicked, called up a government collection team to pick up the documents, and oh boy was Staff Sergeant Gonzalez in hot water after all this. Now, the sort of rub in this case was, there was no espionage related ill intentions. Just a whole bunch of secret defense documents that had been removed from government custody and then lost. Now, the defense's argument in this case was, well, what is lost, really? You can't prove that we didn't have custody over the defense documents because I'm part of the government for this period in question. The court's response? Okay, buddy, that's not gonna fly here. His actions were deemed to be egregious to the point of criminality because of that gross negligence I mentioned earlier. And gross negligence, get ready to hear those two words a whole lot in the back end of this episode. In that case, the United States had successfully argued that they had lost custody of the secret defense documents in question because of actions that Gonzalez took. Now it's this somewhat arbitrary gross negligence versus just sort of run of the mill negligence that has saved a lot of people, including Hillary Clinton and her private server storing classified emails off of the government servers. Now this whole thing is pretty subjective, but James Comey looked at Secretary of State Clinton's removal of digital copies of defense secrets from government custody and to her own private server and deemed that while it was very careless, it didn't rise to the level of gross negligence. Some people agreed, some people didn't. There is isn't an objective right answer, it's up to the prosecutor. Now with today's Mar-a-Lago's case, the facts on the ground are still super censored, not sure if I've mentioned that yet. Things could be a lot better or worse for Trump than is being officially reported right now, so I'm not going to try to read the tea leaves and talk about things that haven't been officially confirmed. But based on what we currently know, oh man, there could be a few things to tip this from private email server to Alaskan bender in the eyes of a prosecutor. Now the main piece of evidence is just the whole timeline surrounding this issue, including a pretty prominent subpoena. Now to give you the spark notes of how we got to this situation, which is the most damning part of the situation today, we start with the presidential transition. People started noticing things were missing that legally needed to be turned over to the archivist. These things included letters between Trump and Kim Jong Un, as well as that notorious Sharpie hurricane map. Yeah, apparently someone wanted that really badly. 
Not all top secret hush hush stuff, but still, these were all things that were legally required to remain in the custody of the United States and be turned over to the archivist. And now at this point, it was still less crime and more, whoops, he probably just grabbed the wrong boxes. Most mementos and trinkets from the White House were taken. Now the archivist reached out to Trump's team in Mar-a-Lago because, hey, we need custody over those materials. They got 15 boxes. Now when they started digging through those 15 boxes, between a bunch of super innocuous things like newspaper clippings, they were finding some pretty alarming highly classified national defense documents popping up. And well, they looked at it and said this could be a bit of a problem. Still, we got some wiggle room as far as gross negligence is concerned, it's still just maybe a whoopsie daisy. A subpoena is filed for all the documents in Mar-a-Lago marked classified. It specifically says that even if Trumps believes they aren't classified, gotta throw them in. If they still have the sticker on them saying classified, gotta turn it over right now. These are the documents that A belong to the government and B on top of that are national defense documents that the government is actively taking steps to keep secret. So alright, June 3rd comes around, the FBI shows up to collect the subpoenaed documents, they get handed over, everything's a bit hunky dory. Military secrets are hauled back in government custody again. Trump's lawyers even go as far as to sign a document saying, alright we did a thorough search of the entire property and guess what, this is all of the classified information we have. Now if that was everything, well, this would be a very short episode. It's at this point that you're looking up from the bottom of a hole and asking for a shovel. Things are really about to shift from Clinton's carelessness to Gonzalez's gross negligence pretty fast. If there were to still be a bunch of defense secrets that were found in the premises after everyone signed these thorough search documents, well now you're lying to the FBI about possessing defense secrets and it really looks like that third thing's gonna start kicking in. So while well, the FBI starts interviewing Mar-a-Lago staff, subpoenas some camera footage from Mar-a-Lago, and somehow between all of that comes up with enough evidence that there might still be some secrets of national security information floating around that need to be returned to government custody. A warrant is quickly approved from the judge and then the FBI uses that warrant to explore the premises. And what do you know, a lot more documents marked classified. So now we're here, we got the mundane process crime of withholding documents from the archivist's custody. We also have the yet to be publicly explored potential crime of destroying evidence in an investigation. We'll see what those staff interviews and subpoenaed surveillance footage turn up on that front. And finally, we have the potentially very scandalous crime of gross negligence in dealing with national security documents that the government has taken steps to keep a secret. Now on top of those three things that I've talked about so far in this episode, it's just a whole bunch of information that we don't know yet that could, I don't know, it could exonerate Trump, could reveal new crimes, or it could reveal an illegal intent to possess these documents, meaning that you would no longer have to rely on the gross negligence standard to actually argue criminal action anymore. Instead, you could say, well, he was trying to do something super sketch, I can lay it out, so it doesn't matter if he was really competent in breaking that law or not. Now before I go, I just saw some people bring up Obama in this whole classified documents debate and him transporting classified documents post presidency to Chicago. Now to nip a few comments in the bud, first, yeah, classified documents were brought to Illinois, but they were under the custody of the federal archivist and are currently being held at a facility that the government and the archivist control. Government at all times has full custody over the documents. Obama, he's just got visitation rights. He can go over there and see him when he wants to. It's actually an example of how to do this perfectly. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that.
Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, non-partisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.